Hello everybody, you know me. Okay, no you don't, but you know who I am. I'm Mr. J, and it's Hannah Monday. So, yeah, um, we're talking about Elfin Lead today, and strap in, because it's about to get really crazy. Elfin Lead is directed by Mamoru Kanbei, written by Takao Yoshioka, and based off of the manga by Lin Okamoto. And the the show is is very different if you don't know about love stories or tragic stories in this type of series, in anime or manga itself. And we'll get into that really, really shortly. The show is about uh, Lucy, and she is a Declonius, which is a type of mutant in this world. Uh, yeah, so she is trapped and experimented on by the government when the show starts. Unfortunately for them, she escapes, so it becomes a bloodbath. Uh, <laughs> While she's escaping, she ends up on the beach, but, but then uh, she gets shot, so she ends up having a new personality by the name of New. And when this happens, she becomes a lot more childlike. And Kota and Yuka, two people working in the Kanade ha House Inn, end up finding her. And they take her in and they start living together, basically. It becomes an interesting dynamic, especially when... Kota starts to feel drawn to her, but he doesn't know why. It's also interesting that Yuka has feelings for Kota, and it, whenever she's, he is around any type of girl, she gets jealous, and she wants all Kota's attention for herself. And then that is where the story picks up and boy does it pick up. Alrighty, so if you cannot handle violence, blood, and gore, this is not the show for you. This is probably the most violent show that I have ever seen. And I mean violence towards child characters, violence towards female and male characters, dis regardless of age. Some of the craziest fight scenes between two Declonius or Declonii? I don't know. It is crazy how violent this show. It opens, the show opens with a bloodbath. I wasn't just kidding about that. I mean, it opens with a bloodbath. Possibly in the hundreds by the time this show has officially started is the death toll. It is, it is insane. You guys, I mean it. It is, it is hard to look at at times. It is that gruesome. But once you get past that, once you get past the violence and the harsh imagery, you peel the layers to a love story you didn't even know you wanted. A love story that is tragic. It is sad. It is emotionally scarring. But in the right ways. If that makes sense and yeah I would definitely say go check this one out because it is bizarre it is violent it is insane but because it's all those things and with the love story thrown in and with all of these other elements thrown in it becomes an experience an experience that you actually have to watch and actually be there to understand, to enjoy even. Once it gets to the final stretch of the series, it, it becomes something amazing. I'm not lying. 
and yeah, like I said, check this one out. It it was it was intense and also I did want to say that once you start learning more and more about these characters, it becomes apparent how tragic this series really is with what happens to Lucy, what happens to Kota, and just the overall sensation you will end up feeling for these characters because of how hard they had to grow up, just how messed up their past really was. Speaking about that, let's talk about Lucy slash new. Um, yeah, so she's the main character, the main focus. She is the Declonius, and well, oh boy, her backstory is heart-wrenching. When you see what she had to go through, it, it, it hurts. It hurts. Lucy had the roughest childhood I've ever seen in an anime depicted, depicted in an anime, however you want to say that sentence. But yeah, it was, it was sometimes hard to watch. A lot of torture scenes, a lot of messed up, emotionally scarring, and that's for the viewer, so the character is just beyond help at this point. And then when she goes onto her murderous rampages, when she does end up going through all of these things, it's almost justified, but then again it isn't. Just because of how difficult it is to watch this. And when she becomes new, her childlike persona is all about Kota. And she she has this affection towards him. Is it love? Is it something else? You have to watch to find out. But it is it is it is it is there and when you see why they are connected through the flashbacks, it it becomes it becomes an emotional <laughs> mess. And then we have Kota himself. Um, he ends up finding Lucy slash New when after she gets injured, and with her with his cousin Yuka, they bring her to the hotel, the inn. And they decide to take care of her, try to get her back on her feet. And he, when he sees her, he has this unnatural connection to her. But he doesn't know why. He doesn't really understand why. And when his flashbacks start coming, when we actually understand why, when he starts to understand why, oh, it hurts. I was almost in tears because of how intense his storyline was. And yeah, it, it was, it, it, this is not a feel-good anime, not by a long shot, but they write so well. Um, yeah, Kota definitely has a struggle. <laughs> and then we have Yuka, the cousin and also love interest to Kota, which I know Ew, but it, this is Japanese, so it, just bear with me. Uh, whenever she, he, whenever Yuka sees Kota with any other female, she gets incredibly jealous, and yeah, they he does not remember her, and that hurts her heart because of how much he, she loves Kota. Uh, I wish it would have been a childhood friend, but again. Len Okamoto was able to do whatever she wanted, and this is her choice. But, yeah, so, Yuka definitely plays a huge part in this story, and where these characters start and where they finish, it's pretty intense, to say the least. So, the main characters are really good. They drive the story from... A, B, all the way to C. Uh, they have a really good connection towards each other, and the more the story goes, the more these characters grow. And it 
is like I said many times, it is intense, it is heart-wrenching, it is sad. The supporting cast of characters, also fantastic. Um, and when you see more and more of what these characters bring to the table, and their tragic backstories, you, you just sit after every episode feeling, what in the world is happening? How? Why? What? And yeah, it is it is emotionally taskful. It it takes a lot out of you to sit through it. But after sitting through it, you gain so much more. It is an experience I say definitely check out the characters, the writing, everything, and the visuals. Yeah. Check this one out, you guys. All right, you guys, you know what time it is. It's time for the music. And the opening song is Lilium by Kumiko Noma. And this song is very operatic. It's sung in Latin, and it is very, very melancholy. It definitely works well as an opening to what Elfin Lead is, becomes, and ends on. The matching of this song is really great. Kumiko Noma has an amazing vocal range. The production of this song is so good. Yeah, let's definitely listen to this one because it definitely puts you in the right mood after uh, getting ready to see what you are about to see, especially that very first scene. Yeah. This song is actually, and the song is really good. Great instruments. Like I said, Kumiko Noma, her voice is wonderful. And the ending song is Be Your Girl by Chieko Kawabe. And I really love this song. Uh, it is very happy, very uh, pop rocky, kind of, sort of. Uh, great instruments. Chieko is a great singer as well. However, it is a juxtaposition of what the show is. It is complete. It is a complete 180, 100%. Uh, go from this melancholy hard show to this happy go lucky ending music. But I think it works. I think it really works because you're listening to this happy music and it's taking your brain away from what you just saw, and it's letting you reflect and just wind down and be like, did I just see that? Yes, yes I did. What just happened? And I thought it was a great decision to put this song in there. Um, yeah, so this song is also really great. Don't skip it. Just listen to it. Chieko is amazing. The music is amazing. Be Your Girl is amazing. <laughs> to sum up, everybody, the show is mature, obviously. They have some nudity and they have some language thrown in there by some of the side characters. But it's the violence that definitely makes this mature. It is, it is not easy to watch. It is not easy to sit through. Uh, it took me a couple tries to get through that first scene because it is that intense. But it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be that unsettling. The whole theme of this anime is to be unsettling and it works so well it is a beautiful story once you cut through all the layers check this one out i can't recommend this one enough uh has it has a melancholy theme all the way through but a fantastic delivery a fantastic ending Yes, check this one out, everybody, and let's put anime more into the limelight, into the mainstream, because we love it, why not? Let's get more of it. Let's get more of it so that way we can enjoy what we love. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching, and until next time, it will be awesome.